Good afternoon. I'm Hugh Sampson, a professor of pediatrics from the Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York City, and I had the privilege of moderating the session on molecular allergology in component resolved diagnostics. I'd like to review with you uh, the status of this symposium and some suggested future directions. When we look at the component proteins comprising a food, as uh, demonstrated in this figure, we have certain proteins which are responsible for the allergic reaction. We have others that are cross-reactive uh, with other uh, plant proteins and may induce partial or no reactivity and also uh, proteins that contain glycans leading to nonspecific IgE binding and positive responses on the allergy tests. When we think about the different uh, tests available to diagnose uh, allergy at this point, besides history, we have the skin prick test, serum IgE levels, component resolved diagnostics, and the uh, exposure challenge or oral food challenge or bee sting challenge. The skin prick tests are simple, cost-effective, and sensitive, uh, but the reagents aren't standardized, the methods aren't standardized, and there's really been uh, poor specificity. When we look at serum-specific IgE levels to various uh, proteins, we know they're quantitative and sensitive, but they do have limited specificity. With the component resolved diagnostics, where we're looking at specific proteins within certain foods or or venoms, we have improved specificity, but there's really limited data available at this point to give us their full utility. I would also like to suggest that for the future, we may have epitope-specific IgE microarray assays where we're able to look at where exactly the IgE antibody binds to the protein. And this, we believe, will give us improved specificity and may help us uh, in diagnosing the severity and the prognosis of the patient. However, at this time, these studies all require validation. And then finally, we have the uh, exposure challenge, which may be an oral food challenge or a bee sting challenge. These tests are the gold standard. They're very accurate, but they do have potential risk. They're time consuming and expensive. Now, in the first presentation by Carson Vincent Jensen, he showed us data on the component resolved diagnostics for milk and egg allergy. Here he showed that the cow's milk uh, caseins are primarily responsible for IgE binding in egg, its ovalbumin and ovomucoid, but he indicated that the component-specific IgE levels uh, for the diagnosis of cow's milk and hen's egg did not really provide a significant advantage over the classic uh, whole protein uh, diagnostic tests. I'd like to suggest that as we get into uh, epitope-specific uh, analysis, as depicted here, where we show four peptides from ovomucoid that represent the majority of the binding to the ovomucoid protein, that we may be able to get more information. And as shown in the next slide, where we have analyzed IgE binding to four different peptides from ovomucoid, Dr. Jarvin in this study showed that we can distinguish between those with persistent food allergy and those who have transient egg allergy or those who will outgrow it. Similarly, looking at the casein proteins, we can also utilize specific peptides uh, from the alpha S1, alpha S2, or kappa casein that will allow us to distinguish between those children who are clearly reactive to to the milk uh, substance and also those who will have persistent allergy compared to those who uh, will become tolerant. In a study that w just came out this year uh, by Vareda et al. looking at the component peanut proteins in different areas the, of the world comparing the U.S. versus Spain and Sweden, we see that the U.S. Popula population of peanut allergic patients uh, primarily recognize air H2, with 90% of peanut allergic patients having significant antibody to this protein. Whereas in uh, Spain, we see much lower level, only 42%, with the majority having uh, significant binding to air H9 or the LTP protein. 
And then looking at the data from Sweden, we see that here the levels are intermediate with uh, the predominant protein being RH2 in the Swedish population, but significant binding uh, to RH8, uh, which is the BETV1 related protein. Now looking at the epitope data for peanut allergy, the next slide depicts the different peptides that are, are bound by pooled sera, data that was primarily generated from uh, pooled samples. However, with the use of the peptide microarray, we can now look at individual patients, and as shown here, we have individuals who may have limited binding, such as uh, this patient where we see limited binding to uh, two epitopes in RH2, or another patient where we see extensive epitope binding in all three uh, major proteins. From analyzing this data, we were able to demonstrate that there was a correlation between specific epitopes recognized by the patient and the likelihood that that patient would be reactive to, peanut, uh, aller or to peanuts, and specific epitopes recognized in the likelihood of developing tolerance over time to peanut. We also saw that the number of epitopes recognized and the severity of the reactions experienced by those patients were directly correlated. So looking at the uh, component result diagnostics in peanut allergy, uh, Dr. Binslev Jensen showed us that ARH2 levels greater than 1.63 kiliunits per liter was 100% predictive of those individuals having positive reactions whereas those individuals who had levels less than 1.63, only about two-thirds had positive challenges. He also showed that the RH2 level does not predict the threshold dose uh, for the particular patients. RH2 and RH8 levels uh, were valuable in discriminating between systemic reactors and those with cross-reacting BETV1 in the uh, study of the three different countries uh, in the Vereda study. And IgE to RH9 was shown to be very important in uh, detecting individuals in the Mediterranean area who might experience systemic reaction. And then finally, the epitope analysis may enable us to improve the specificity and predict severity of reactions in the peanut allergic population. Now the one area that was shown to be very useful uh, for component resolved diagnostics was in the area of fruit and nut allergy. Uh, Dr. Balmer Weber showed us that there was poor correlation between fruit and hazelnut IgE whole extracts, but sensitization to BETV1 homologs, uh, the PRUAV1, the MALD1, and the CORE1 showed identified individuals who were at high risk for oral allergy syndrome, whereas those who were sensitized to the LP LTPs, PRUAV3, MALD3, and CORE8, were at high risk for systemic reactions to cherry, apple, and hazelnut, with positive reaction rates between 30 and 50 percent. In another study uh, done several years ago in the U.S., uh, Kirsten Beyer was able to show that sensitization to CORE8-9 is a significant risk factor for systemic reactions, especially in young children. And then, due to the high cross-reactivity between the LTPs derived from the various uh, stone fruits, the commercially available PRU-P3 immunocap was shown to be a useful marker for, the, for this type of uh, reaction in fruit allergy. Moving on then to the component resolved diagnostics in bee and wasp venom allergy, Thiel Jacob showed us that 45% of sting allergic patients were positive to both bee venom and wasp venom when using the standard whole protein reagent. However, utilizing the components, recombinant APM1 and best V5, uh, Dr. Tha or Dr. Jacob was able to show that 55% of these patients were allergic to one insect and 37, in fact, were allergic to both. By using combinations of the recombinant proteins, he showed that he, can, he could improve the sensitivity uh, towards uh, bee venom allergy uh, from 69 to 91 percent sensitivity using a combination of recombinant proteins 1 through 5 and 10 as opposed to uh, the APM1 alone. 
with the VESB-5, the addition of VES VESB-1 improved the sensitivity from 88 to 96 percent. So showing that we can get higher uh, sensitivity with good, good specificity by combining several of these recombinant proteins. So in conclusion, uh, Dr. Jakob showed us that the components facilitate the discrimination between honeybee and wasp allergy, which will lead to improved immunotherapy because of proper selection of species. But also perhaps even more important, he showed that the selection of the specific bee venom vaccine may be dependent on the particular component that the patient is allergic to. So in conclusion, the specific allergen components are, are becoming increasingly useful at assessing the risk for clinical reactions in many of our patients. Uh, in the future, they may potentially identify those individuals who are at higher risk and those who will experience more severe or persistent reactions. This slide and the following slide indicate a number of studies that have been done using component uh, proteins for diagnosis, both in uh, peanut, egg, milk, and uh, various fruits such as peach, hazelnut, and bee venom.